Early and regular mobilization of patients is an important aspect of care. There are many different techniques and devices that can aid caregivers to ambulate, transfer, or reposition their patients. The Sabina 2 Sit-to-Stand Mechanical Patient Lift is one such device that is available for use at Trinity Health Livonia. This video will show an overview of the Sabina 2 and demonstrate safe use of the equipment to transfer a patient. The Sabina 2 is a sit-to-stand mechanical lift that uses a patient harness and a powered lift device to aid you in transferring a patient from a seated position on one surface, such as a bed, to a seated position on another surface, such as a chair or commode. It allows you to perform this process without any need for physically lifting the patient with your own strength, which eliminates any risk to the caregiver and, in effect, provides a safer and more reliable transfer process for the patient. Sit-to-stand devices are best utilized for patients requiring moderate assistance to mobilize. If you are utilizing the BMAT scale, patients scoring a level 2 or 3 would be appropriate cases for the Sabina to be used. The Sabina lift can support up to a 440-pound patient, but the harness that is utilized at Trinity Health Livonia is only rated for 400 pounds, so the maximum patient weight that can be supported by a Sabina at Trinity Health Livonia is 400 pounds. Before using any equipment, it is always best to understand the features and how to safely use them. On the patient side of this device, the Sabina consists of a platform for the patient to rest their feet, a molded cushion and padded strap to support the lower legs, and two extended arms with clips to secure the harness. The arms will lift and lower to move the patient from seated to standing and back to seated. On the provider side of the device, you have access to everything needed to control the Sabina too. The wheels on the back of the lift are lockable. Lock them by stepping down on the mechanism. Unlock them by pushing the lifted tab forward with your toe. Whenever you are lifting or lowering a patient with this equipment, you must lock the wheels. As we move up the device, you'll notice a power cord. The Sabina is battery powered. Whenever it is not in use, the device should be plugged in to ensure a charged battery when the lift is needed. But the lift should not be plugged in during use as it would impede the mobility of the lift. Just rely on the battery power. There is a small screen on the back of the device that will indicate battery charge. But when the lift is plugged in, the screen changes from percent of battery charge to a plug icon. There are also two small LEDs, a green one to indicate that the device is on, which it always will be if it is either plugged in or has a charged battery, and a yellow LED indicating that the battery is charging. When the battery is charged to 100%, the charging light will turn off. Above the lights and screen is a large red button, and around the side of the lift you'll notice another red piece, a liftable handle. These red controls work together as an emergency release. If the lift controls suddenly stop working, which can happen if the battery dies while transferring a patient. You can use the emergency release to disconnect from the electronic controls and activate a hydraulic lowering process. First press the red button on the back until it clicks and stays pressed. Then have the patient lean back toward the bed or chair so their weight is pulling down on the lift. Then pull up on the red handle on the side of the lift. The hydraulics will slowly and safely lower the patient to a seated position. To reactivate the electronics, which you will want to do once you have the patient disconnected from the lift, twist the red button clockwise a quarter turn and you will feel it release as it returns to its unpressed state. Then plug the lift in to charge the battery. If you ever go to use the Sabina and the electronic controls don't seem to be working, do some quick troubleshooting and assessment to eliminate some common issues. First, look at the battery screen. Does it indicate a charged battery? Or if the machine is plugged in, does it show a plug image? If it's not plugged in and the screen doesn't show a charge, the battery is probably dead. Plug it in and you should see the yellow charge LED illuminate. If it doesn't, or if the machine is plugged in, but there is nothing on the battery screen and no LED lights for charge or on, trace the power cord back to the machine. Is it detached or loose? Ensure the plug is properly and solidly inserted into the machine. If the cord is plugged into the machine and to power and you still don't see a plug icon on the screen or the charge LED doesn't illuminate, the battery is probably completely depleted and needs to be replaced. Contact Biomed and they will come up to replace the battery as soon as possible. If the battery is fully charged, the lights are lit, and the screen is showing you everything you want to see but the controls still aren't working, look at that red button. Is it pressed? If so, turn it clockwise to release it and you should have full function of your controls again. The standard electronic controls for the Sabina can be found on the attached hand unit. There are two sets of arrows. The top set are thicker arrows, and they indicate that by pressing those it will raise or lower the lift at a faster pace. The narrower arrows move the lift at half that pace. The bottom set of buttons are to adjust the width of the lift's feet. The button on the left will widen the feet, and the button on the right will bring those feet back to parallel. 
This can be useful when bringing the lift close to the patient or to the desired destination. You may need to widen the feet to get around the legs of a chair or a commode to bring the patient into position before lowering. Or you may need to bring them back together to fit between wheels or legs of a bed to get in close enough to lift the patient. And finally, as we move further up the machine, there are two large handles for the caregiver to use to steer and control the lift as you relocate your patient. To use the sit to stand, the patient will need to wear a harness that connects to the machine. The harness used at Trinity Livonia is this corset design. Straps extend from the top and bottom of the harness. The straps that terminate with a carabiner are the leg straps that are not used when using the Sabina 2, so before putting the harness on the patient, shorten those straps as much as possible and then take that carabiner and clip it to the topmost loop on the back of the harness to get them out of the way. There are also two looped straps extending from the top of the harness. These will be used to attach the patient to the lift after applying the harness. On the end of the harness are the male and female ends of clips that will be used to secure the patient when applying the harness. With the patient in a seated position, Wrap the harness around the patient's abdomen so that the clips are positioned in the front. Connect all the clips and pull the straps of each clip snug. If it's too loose, the patient could slide down into the harness when lifting, so ensure a snug fit. Now you need to position the top straps. On either side of the harness are a series of loops. Take the strap and put it through the center loop, inserting from the back and pulling the strap out toward the front. Repeat the same process on the other side. With the harness on, bring the Sabina to the bedside. You may need to widen or narrow the feet to allow you to bring the device close enough to the patient. The patient's feet should rest on the platform, and their lower legs should be pressed into the formed cushion. Their knees must be above the top of the cushion. You can raise or lower the cushion if necessary by loosening the bolts on the back of the cushion and tightening them when you have it in the proper position. When the lift is in position, lock the wheels. Take the leg strap and bring it behind the patient's calves and secure it in place. This will ensure the patient's legs won't slide out during transfer. Next, lower the lift arms and take the loops from the right and left of the harness and connect them to the clips at the end of the lift arms. Have the patient grasp the extended arms from the side. Don't hold on to the middle. The patient is now properly connected and positioned on the lift. Take the control unit and press the up button. Stop lifting when the patient is in a standing position. Unlock the wheels and roll the patient to the desired location. You will need to bring the lift in close to the destination surface, in this case, the chair. You may need to widen the legs to achieve this. When the patient is in front of the destination surface, lock the wheels. Then push down on the control unit and hold down on the button until they are in a seated position. Disconnect the straps from the arms and unstrap the patient's legs. Roll the lift out of the way. If the patient is toileting and you'll be getting them up in a few minutes, it's okay to leave the harness on to make that second transfer faster and easier. If they'll be in the chair for an extended period of time and the harness would be uncomfortable, it's okay to remove it after the transfer is complete and reapply it when they need to move back to the bed later. Frequent mobilization of patients is a detrimental aspect of patient care, but in many cases it can be difficult, presenting risks to both the patient and the caregiver. The use of mechanical lifts ensures a safe and effective method of mobilizing patients that should be considered and utilized whenever appropriate.